Hey, y'all. For any of you guys at home that don't know, I am a retired career criminal, a 20-year drug addict, and I'm currently on house arrest. But these days, I am a recovery coach, a peer support specialist, and a smart recovery facilitator. Today, I want to talk about something that's like one of the most talked about, most asked subjects that I get, and that is fucking pedophiles. I literally had my main account on TikTok banned at 280k followers for talking about just this fucking subject. This is a large part of the reason why I came to this fucking platform so that I could speak freely about pedophiles. You should also know that this is something that I get real worked up about because I am myself personally a childhood sexual assault survivor and it set my life in a completely different direction than it probably would have gone if that piece of shit hadn't violated my body as a child. But that little piece of TMI is a completely different video. Today, I want to get to the good stuff. How pedophiles get done in prison. Any of my felons and convicts out there know exactly what I'm fucking talking about when I say these motherfuckers get the blues when they get fucking locked down. As always, a lot of shit varies from state to state depending on which state you're locked up in. My personal experience is from Oregon. Some states will segregate the sex offenders from the rest of the fucking gen pop for their safety. Fuck that. The state of Oregon actually tried that. That's what Snake River Correctional Institution used to be. That whole facility started off just to house sex offenders. And it's one of the nicest, cleanest facilities in the state. But the sex offenders got upset and they felt like they were being discriminated against. So they filed a fucking lawsuit to get put in gen pop with the rest of the motherfucking felons. (laughs) Can you guess how that shit turned out? I bet you can. These entitled fucking baby raping piece of shit pukes had the nicest joint in the fucking state. I'm betting they probably had Nickelodeon in the goddamn Disney Channel too, but they fucked around and then they found out. So they started shipping sex offenders to every other joint in the fucking state. But while they were doing that, they were sending solid ass dudes to Snake River. But everybody knew that Snake River was a sex offender prison. So there was this confusion and a lot of people got fucked up because they thought that good dudes were actually sex offenders. It was some messy ass bullshit and it was entirely on administration. To my knowledge, and I might be wrong about this, I might be off base, I don't have experience with it, but I don't think Oregon has any large PC yards. Like Snake River was their answer for that shit. They have two rivers which is set up like a supermax where it's like unit to unit to unit and you may not see people from other units like hardly ever. But like how they have things set up in California where there's just PC yards, yeah, we ain't got that. Bitch, if you PC, you sitting in motherfucking seg. Have fun with that, you fucking punk. They gotta bring you out for medical sometime and we're gonna see you when we see you. So to be honest, by the time that I got to Snake River, it had already been like an open mixed fucking population for a long time, like many years. So long that they had built another complex and another complex. So there was like three complexes and one was the like, the good behavior complex, which I would never see in a million fucking years. And then the other two were just fucking gladiator school. Now Snake River's out in the middle of the desert and it's a very low population area. Like most of the people that are doing time there, they're actually from the fucking valley, man. They're from a long ways away. They don't get a lot of visits. Like hardly anyone gets visits out there. Like unless you're from one of the little outskirts ass towns, you're probably not gonna see your people very often. It's very remote. So the street drug trade was like slimmer there. Like there wasn't as much drugs there, like actual street drugs. There was shit you got off medical. And then there was the drugs that were actually brought in by staff. That was like the majority of the drugs were clearly brought in by fucking staff members. But part of my point to that is that it was not a place to really hustle super hard. It was not cracking with the drugs. There was the gambling and that was cool, but the number one racket was extortion. And the number one type of motherfucker that gets extorted clearly is gonna be these motherfucking sex offenders. Now you can't extort nobody if you're not in a motherfucking gang. That shit just doesn't work. The gangs are gonna come. They're gonna take your fucking punks from you. You're not fucking authorized to extort unless you're part of a car and different cars take their punks more seriously. There's some cars that they're like, if you fuck with their rapist, bro, that's paying them, they're gonna be like, you're fucking with my money. Fuck that, bro. Like anybody that I extorted, I'm not fucking getting money from you to protect you, bitch. I'm just getting money from you so that I personally and my homeboys don't fucking kill you. But there was a dude on my unit that everybody had called the snowman and he had been there for like fucking over eight years. This dude had never once seen the fucking yard. We called him the snowman because he was so fucking pale. He was already paying another gang, but I was still gonna fuck with this dude. I fucked with him on a daily basis. Anytime I saw this motherfucker, I fucked with him and he told 
me, leave me alone. It wasn't my fault. My mom knew I had a problem. She never should have started a daycare. Now the deal with this dude is his car that he was paying, they didn't give a fuck what you did to him as long as you didn't fuck up his face because then they might take him and they might move him somewhere else and he was a high dollar fucking asset. Apparently, his mother still put mad money on his books every fucking month. The mother who started the daycare and facilitated him being able to molest children. I served this dude rib shots every opportunity I got. If there wasn't a fucking cop watching, I was punching this dude right in his fucking sides. But the thing about this guy is he knew exactly what was coming. He'd been doing this for eight years. So he tried to stay in line of sight from the fucking COs at any given time, man. It was his only survival technique. And it didn't matter how soft or how hard you hit this dude, every single time you hit him, this bitch cried, which I found oddly soothing. Now also at Snake River, at the same time, we had another semi-famous prison pedophile. His name was Flipper. Can you guess why we called him Flipper? This motherfucker had a congenital birth defect and he only had like half arms, like his arms were fused up and he looked like he had T-Rex arms like this. I saw him trying to bounce a basketball on the basketball court one time. He was trying to dribble and it went down. He was like, I fucking died. I died. Now, admittedly, this dude's charges were not nearly as insidious as the snowman's. He wasn't like a straight up diaper sniper motherfucker. What he had going on was he kept trying to hire prostitutes and because he had the little T-Rex arms, they kept fucking robbing him. He got tired of getting took, so he took a fucking gun to a hotel room, right? And he got this prostitute there, and she went to rob him. He pulled the gun. She beat the fuck out of his ass and called the police on him. So he was on something like an unlawful detainment, which is like kidnapping, an attempted rape, and some level of an assault on this case. But his case before that, he had served time in Washington because he went to Canada where the consent laws are much lower. I think it's like 14 or something. He had picked up a 14 year old girl and he was trying to smuggle her across the fucking border by giving her fucking drugs and getting her drugged up. He tried to get her across the border. They stopped his ass at the border and said, something is not cool here. And he went to prison in Washington right before he went to prison in Oregon. Now this dude even got a little TikTok and YouTube famous recently for his fucking extreme pro-life rants where he's talking about how fucking awful bitches are and they're all fucking murderers and he fucking hates women. We can tell motherfucker, we already knew that shit, bitch. I'm pretty sure they banned all of his accounts, but I'll see if I can find some footage. Ah, here we go. Listen up all you liberal pigs. Abortion is not outlawed. Anybody that friggin' would protesting for the right to kill their kids is a demon and they shall be destroyed. You all out there protesting and crap saying, oh, abortion saves lives. No, it doesn't. It kills life. Abortion kills little babies and kills everybody. You dumbass liberal pigs. I go looking at all these protesters on the internet. They're all fat. Fat ass bitches that are ugly as hell. I don't know. These, these women, I would never, I would never freaking them. They even want to have sex with any of these fat ass bitches that are out there protesting. They're all they're all ugly. They think they think that they're ever gonna get pregnant in the first place. Abortion is illegal now in half the states. And soon it will be illegal worldwide. If you wanna be freaking not have to worry about a baby, keep your damn legs closed. That's the easiest way, y'all. If you have sex with a man, you should be forced to have that baby. You can put the baby up for adoption. Listen, these liberal pigs are ugly as hell. All these women, look at some of these protests. They're fat. They're up there. No, I'm not in a Costco. I'm in a truck stop. Where else would I be? I love Donald Trump. He put in the right people at the right time to get rid of this horrible law. Wait until you see Trump come back on maybe Monday. Trump might be coming back Monday. The whole thing's being torn down, y'all. Donald J. Trump is your president. It's all Big Murphy. They're about to find out when Trump comes back sooner than by the 4th of July. Yeah, that's definitely somebody that we should let back out onto the streets. I'm sure he's safe around women and children. He seems completely rehabilitated, right?
Now, I never personally saw this dude get fucking served up. I never saw him get the shit beat out of him. I feel like a lot of people, everybody hated him, but I feel like a lot of people felt a little bit of sympathy for him because he was clearly disabled as fuck and wasn't going to be able to fight back at all. And even though we hate pedophiles, a lot of us are just not trained to be bullies, man. We're not trying to do that to somebody who has a disability. Even though he probably deserved it, he did get a lot more passes than he probably should have. Now, personally, I fucking love administrative oversights because they make amazing things happen. So there was a child molester that was out at Snake who the dad of the child ended up ding, ding, ding on the same complex out at Snake. Not the same unit, but the same complex. This dad asked us for a shank and we were like, bet, bet that shit up, homeboy. We got this. We support you. And he went and soldiered across the fucking hall down the fucking way and got into this fucking dude's unit and caught him in the shower and was caught trying to straight scalp this motherfucker. He was trying to cut this dude's wig straight the fuck off his head. Once they ran up on him and he knew that he wasn't gonna be able to pull that whole fucking thing back, he just started stabbing the motherfucker. And there was blood trails all the way down the fucking hall. They wheeled this dude down there and he was gushing. Parenting done right. Now, as much as I hate to say this, sometimes sex offenders have a tiny bit of heart and they are halfway tough, halfway. One time I watched two gang members roll up on a chimo. The chimo told them, fuck you, you can suck my dick. I ain't paying you bitches shit. They jumped him and he was mopping both of these motherfuckers. They were able to get him down on the ground though. And I ran over, I was wearing work boots and I fucking kicked this dude in the fucking shit as hard as I could. I stomped his face like three times. Then I got the fuck from around there because I wasn't trying to go to the hole over their fucking lick. All three of them went to the hole and we never saw that fucking mouthy pedo ever again. But I'm pretty sure he wasn't gonna be too mouthy because I think I took his jaw right off hinge. Now, for those of you who haven't been to prison, you don't understand how it works, you get a custody level, which is basically your security clearance. Like, a lot of joints are maximum, a lot of joints are minimum, so if you're not down on like a super violent crime, or even if you're down on a violent crime, and you've had good behavior, and you showed good institutional fucking actions and shit like that, your security level will lower with time. But in Oregon, you can't go to a minimum until you are under 39 months to the gate. Most of the minimums are work camps where you go out and you work in the fucking community and they charge a lot of money and you're like, it's basically slave labor. You know what I'm saying? Now, due to DOC in Oregon being sensitive because of the discrimination lawsuit that they had already lost because of Snake River, they had no choice but to put sex offenders into minimum camps, but they couldn't get outside clearance. They couldn't be cleared to go out the gate and work in the community because there was too high of a chance that they would reoffend while out there. And then they'd have liability on that end. So the good dudes would go out to work while a bunch of fucking molesters and fucking rapists were cooking our fucking food, washing our fucking toilets, mopping and doing fucking yard work within the fucking fence. I think that in the maximum security facilities, these fucking punks somehow think that if they could just make it to minimum, they'll be safe. And that is the farthest from the fucking truth. You're in a dorm setting, you have a lot more free movement, it's a lot easier to execute shit and get away with it when you're at a minimum facility. So these motherfuckers would go there thinking they're safe and then they'd be getting dragged out to outside medical because their facial structure got fucking crushed in. There was this dude at a minimum camp that I was at who was titled the Lane County Bike Path Rapist. He would go out on the bike path, hide in bushes, and jump out and knock women off of their bikes and sexually assault them in these parks. At the time when this was happening, my mom was really into going and fast walking and jogging on these trails. It was like her release, it was what made her feel good about herself, and it was how she was keeping herself healthy. But when this dude started this shit and it hit the news, she had to stop doing that for fear of being raped by this fucking maggot. He was in another unit than me, so I was having trouble getting at this motherfucker. But he was friends with one of the punks that was paying me, another fucking sex offender that I had on my fucking roster that was paying me money every fucking month just so I wouldn't fucking stab his ass. There was an activities building that had just a small little space behind it that was kind of a blind spot for most of the cops. And we were out in the middle of the fucking desert at this place. So I got this punk to lure 
the Lane County bike path rapist back there telling him that there was a baby fox and this dude loved animals for some reason. A rapist that loves animals. I don't fucking understand. I, I fucking hate this dude, man. I got him back there and I beat the fucking ever living dog shit out of this fucking dude. I fucking had him on the ground and I was ground and pounding him and I picked up fucking sand and stuffed it down his fucking throat. He had a history of telling on people that would threaten him, but I beat this dude so fucking badly and let him know that my friends would still be there even if he got me hemmed up and they would fucking handle him immediately if he fucking said a word about me. I beat the fear of God into this bitch ass motherfucker because he didn't say a fucking single word about my name to anybody. I told him to tell him he got fucked up on the basketball court. He's clumsy and he shouldn't be out there playing basketball, which is kind of a go-to excuse and it works pretty well. There is a saying in prison, and that saying is not everybody who goes to church is a rapist, but all rapists go to church. See, it turns out that they are dire in need of forgiveness, forgiveness and acceptance, and they ain't gonna get it from a fucking breathing human inside there, so they turn to Sky Daddy. You can spot these motherfuckers in droves, walking the fucking yard, carrying their Bibles, a lot of them got them thick-rimmed rapist glasses and the fucking weird-ass scraggly pedophile beards. But I don't want you to get the wrong impression because a lot of the times you can spot these motherfuckers, but a lot of times you can't. A lot of times dudes will show up to fucking prison, they'll show up fucking swole, they'll show up with tattoos, and they'll show up with fucking skin beefs, man. Straight undercover motherfuckers so you can never judge a book by its cover. You always have to run the paperwork. And until you've ran anybody's paperwork, in my book, they're considered a suspect. They're sus as fuck until proven otherwise, man. I would run anybody and everybody's paperwork. Now, the way that I did it is I would walk up with my paperwork, throw it down in front of him and be like, bitch, you better have yours. Now, there was a dude that showed up at one of the joints that I was at that everybody kind of liked. Everybody seemed to think he was a straight dude. I read his paperwork and all of his shit seemed legit, but something didn't sit right about this motherfucker. This dude even seemed halfway tough, but I just... In my gut, I felt that this motherfucker was a freak. There was something weird and off about this dude, and I figured that at some point, his penis was his fucking co-defendant and his motherfucking paperwork. So I had my people on the streets run a background check on him on the internet. This was before we had cool phones in fucking prisons. They were able to look him up and they found charges in Washington. And yes, he was a motherfucking pedophile. And even though this dude came off halfway tough, as soon as I came up to him with the fucking information, he was like, bro, I'll do whatever I need to do. He's like, I don't got a lot of money. If you want me to run a mission, whatever, whatever, yada, yada, yada. So I had him go and beat the fuck out of another pedophile. They both went to the hole and I never saw either of them again. So I want to make this point right now. Like a lot of times these dudes are very adept at being charming, at being polite, at acting respectful, at seeming fucking normal when there is something in their fucking head that makes them an absolute monster that could harm a woman or a child sexually. I think that I have an inherent spidey sense when it comes to that. Like my instincts, my guts tell me because of what happened to me as a kid because the dude who got me as a kid was a part of my parents' church. He was supposed to be a good ass motherfucking dude, but I can fucking smell it on these pieces of shit, man. I was never able to get justice for what was done to me as a child, but I have gotten justice for a lot of other fucking children against their abusers. And that to me gives me some peace and solace when I lay my head down on my fucking pillow at night. And if you're one of those people out there who's gonna come back in my fucking comments and be like, who are you to judge? We all make mistakes you should probably just unsubscribe to me right now because I promise you a lot of my content is going to be going hard against fucking sexual predators. But to the rest of you solid motherfuckers out there, my convicts, my fucking felons, anybody who's interested in prison, anybody has any questions, man, hit it in the comments. I'm going to try to get to it. If I can't comment back, I might make a video out of it. If it's something that I think there's enough to talk about, I love making video responses. So stay tuned. I love each and every one of you guys. Thank you for being here. One love. I'm out. Yes,